Hi, this PowerPoint is from Mrs. Erickson's 7th grade life science class and it is Characteristics on the Five Living Kingdoms. We're going to start with the plant kingdom. In order for an organism to fall into the plant kingdom, it has to be multicellular, which means it's made of many cells. You know when something is multicellular because you can see it. Anything that is unicellular is too small to see unless you have a microscope. To be in the plant kingdom, you have to reproduce sexually. So plants have sexual reproduction, which means they produce an egg and a sperm, and the egg and the sperm unite in order to create a new plant. All plants must be autotrophs, which means they make their own food. And if you make your own food, that means you have to have chloroplasts, and chloroplasts are filled with chlorophyll, which is green in color. So plants are going to be green in color because they're autotrophs. They have chloroplasts. A characteristic that is shared with several kingdoms, all but one, is that they are eukaryotic. A plant cell has to be eukaryotic, which means it has a nucleus. A plant is made up of many cells, so every cell that makes up that plant has a nucleus in it. And the last characteristic that um, falls into the plant kingdom is plant cells have a cell wall. Uh, it is a rigid outer covering to every cell that makes up that plant, and it allows that plant to be able to stand up. It gives it that rigid wall that it needs. An example of some plants would be Elodea, which is pictured. It is an aquatic plant. And moss would be an example of plants, and trees, and shrubs, any grass, any kind of plant that you can think of would fall into this kingdom. The next kingdom we're going to talk about is called the Protista kingdom. The characteristics that uh, organism has to have to be a protist is they are all unicellular, which means every protist is made of only one cell. Therefore, you can't see it with the unaided eye. You have to have a microscope to look at protists. Protists, all of them, have, uh, reproduce asexually, which means there is no sperm and egg. There's a different way of the cell splitting to create two new cells. Also, to be a protist, you can either be an autotroph or a heterotroph. Some protists are autotrophs, therefore they make their own food and they will have green color in them. So when you see under your microscope a one-cell organism um, and you know you're looking at protists, if it's green, then you know it's an autotroph. If you're looking at protists under the microscope and it's not green and it looks like it's searching for food, then it's probably a heterotroph, which means it has to go out and find its food. And there are lots of different ways that protists will move around to try and find their food. And the protist cell is eukaryotic. So every time you look at a protist, it is going to have a nucleus in its cell. Different ways that protists can move. The three ways that we're going to study is called the cilia, flagella, and pseudopod. Cilia is hair-like structures that go all the way around the cell. These little hair-like structures are cilia, and they help them move. They help them get food into their oral groove. Flagella, that's these long things, uh, kind of a tail-like structure. That helps some protists move. And then a pseudopod is uh, what an amoeba would use to move, and it's just sort of uh, they call it a false foot, and it just sort of extends its cell out and kind of creates a false foot. Uh, this would be an example of an amoeba, and so these extensions here are considered a false foot. And here would be another one. So these are pseudopods. There's the nucleus. 
Uh, euglena is not pictured here. Paramecium is not pictured here, but this is another example of a protist. It's called diatoms. They can be very colorful and very pretty. And some algae are considered protists if they are unicellular. The modern kingdom, better known as bacteria kingdom, to be a monarin or a bacteria, you have to be unicellular, made of one cell, asexual reproduction, so the cell splits somehow to form two new cells. The modern kingdom, though, is considered heterotrophs. They have to go out and find their food in order to survive. So when you get strep throat and your throat is hurting you so bad, it's because the monarins are feeding off of the tissues in your throat and that inflames your tissues and, and, and gives you a really bad sore throat. This is the only kingdom that is not eukaryotic. So this kingdom is called prokaryotic, which means there is no nucleus in the cell of a bacteria. And they're the only kingdom that is prokaryotic. Some examples for the modern kingdom, of course, is just bacteria. And you have many different kinds of bacteria. They're usually named according to their shape. So here are some examples of shapes of bacteria. Strepto, so this is what your um, strep streptococcus would look like when you have strep throat. It's going to be bacteria that's round and in a straight line. The fungi kingdom is a kingdom that is very diverse. You can have fungi that are unicellular, made of only one cell. For example, the yeast that you looked at in that very first lab that we did at the beginning of the year. Some fungi are multicellular. They're made of many cells. You can see them because they are made of many cells, like mushrooms. Of course, if they're unicellular, they're going to reproduce asexually. And if they are multicellular, they're going to reproduce sexually. But all fungi, if they belong in the fungi kingdom, they are considered a heterotroph, which means they have to find their food. And the fungi kingdom, all the organisms in this kingdom, usually live off of dead and decaying material. What a great way to eat. Eukaryotic for this kingdom, so the cells that make up a fungi have a nucleus. And many students think that mushrooms um, are more like a plant, but they're not because they don't have chloroplasts. They're not green, so they have to find their own food. So they're not like a plant because of that, but they do have a cell wall. They have to have something to help them stand up as they grow. So the fungi kingdom cells do have a cell wall. Examples, yeast would be an example of a unicellular fungi, <coughs> mushrooms, and then molds, and mildews, black stuff that grows like uh, maybe like on, in the crevices of moist areas, like maybe in a shower or along a window or something. All of those would be examples of multicellular fungi. And the last kingdom we're going to talk about is the Animalia kingdom or the animal kingdom. That's the kingdom that humans belong to. Of course, we are multicellular. We're made of many cells. We reproduce sexually, so a sperm and an egg is required to create another animal. All animals are heterotrophs, which means there's no chloroplasts in any of our cells. We have to go out and find our food. And our cells are eukaryotic. So if you were to look at one cell of an animal, it's going to have a nucleus. Examples in the animal kingdom. Uh, students tend to forget about some of these examples, but insects, they're an animal. Fish, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and yes, humans belong to the same kingdom as a mosquito or as pictured, a cockroach. We are all considered animals.